I want to begin by thanking Rabbi Wise and Cantor Zim and the entire congregation for making me feel so welcome here. You've been a wonderful congregation and I really appreciate it. I have to admit, this is not the first Shabbat I've been at Hollis Hills. 18 years ago, when I first joined Marathon Jewish Community Center, I was invited to Shabbat here. You see, in my very first congregation in Springfield, Massachusetts, Michael and Vicki Wachowskis were my first youth leaders when Michael was a law student at Western New England College. We reconnected when I came here, and they said, you have to come to David's Bar Mitzvah. I said, OK. I can't come Saturday morning because I'm working. I'll come for Mincha, Marev, and Abdallah. They said, it's easy to find Hollis Hills. You just go down Douglaston Parkway all the way to the end, make a right on Union Turnpike, and then you'll bump into the synagogue at 211th Street. Being new to the area, I didn't realize that you had to make a left-hand turn at that light to stay on Douglaston Parkway. I went straight around the curb. It turned out to be West Alley, and I walked, and I walked, and I walked. There was nobody on the streets. Nobody I could ask until finally, there was this man. I said, I need to get to Union Turnpike to go to Hollis Hills Jewish Center. He just looked at me and said, boy, you're flun for bludgeon. <laughs> he must have been Elijah, sent by God, because he not only told me how to get here, he walked me most of the way. So this is really my second Shabbat here at Hollis Hills, Eitz Chaim. Our Parsha, Parshat Pinchas, remind me of what Charlotte Winton once said. For a woman to get half as much credit as a man, she has to work twice as hard and be twice as smart. Fortunately, this isn't difficult. <laughs> In this week's Torah portion, we meet the five daughters of Slavchat. They petitioned Moses to be allowed to inherit a portion of the land in the land of Israel after their father died, leaving no male heirs. Moses takes their case before God, who rules that the plea of Slavchat is indeed just. They should receive a hereditary portion of the land of Israel amongst their father's clan. As you can hear, they challenged tradition. They thought that tradition was unjust and needed to be changed. In the end, their proposal became part and parcel of our Torah. Rashi knows of this dramatic development when he explicitly attributes this new law to the women. Their law, he says, deserves to be written by Moses, but because they were worthy. The law was written by these women. We'll read in the book of Joshua, chapter 17, that the five daughters of Slavchad did take possession in the land of Israel. As you can hear, this was a landmark case, pun intended. The Talmud in Baba Batra, in the context of the laws of the inheritance declares that the daughters of Slavchad were wise, well-versed, and righteous. The rabbis then proceed to demonstrate how these women exemplified these virtues. First, they were wise in that they present their case before Moses at an auspicious time. They waited until Moses was teaching the laws of Levite marriage to the people of Israel. When a man dies childless, his widow marries the deceased brother so that the new offspring 
will be named after the deceased man, and his name will be perpetuated in Israel. It was then that they interjected, making their case about perpetuating their late father's name. The daughters knew that to effect change, it's important to wait for the right moment and then to speak up and to speak out. Secondly, the daughters of Slavcha knew that successfully effecting change is not just about good timing, but also about arming oneself with knowledge in order to make a cogent and informed case. The rabbis in Baba Vatra, in explaining how the daughters were interpreters of verses, relate that they were sufficiently well-versed to, so they could say, our father died without sons. If he had sons, we wouldn't have spoken up. They knew the law, and they knew how to make a reasoned um, argument, invoking the language of the law. And they know that if the law seemed unjust, then it ought to be questioned and reconsidered. But I'm really, really, really grateful for Rivka Lovis's comments on this episode concerning the daughters of Slavchad that she wrote in the book, Dear Shuni, Israeli Women Writing Midrash. Because as a male and as a rabbi, male rabbi, who consulted classical sources also written by male rabbis, I overlooked an important insight. She asked a very simple but wonderful question. Why, at the very beginning of the verse, are these women known as the daughters of Slavchad? And so only at the very end of that same verse do we learn their names. Machla, Noah, Chagla, Milka, and Tirza. She explains that in the beginning, they dwelled under their father's shadow. They were only known as the daughters of Slavchad. They were basically invisible, neither seen nor heard. They were overshadowed. I wonder how many women still today feel overshadowed by men and are deprived because they are invisible, neither seen nor really heard. Lovitz continues that they were afraid to speak out as women amongst all those men until they drew close to each other in order to strengthen each other to challenge that unjust law. Because of this newfound strength that everybody could see in them, their names were recorded. So, I want to ask all of you, especially the women, what are your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations? Are you being overshadowed, barely visible, unheard? What are the roadblocks preventing you from succeeding? Are you being held back by naysayers, even yourself? If so, I want you to be inspired by Machla, Noah, Chagla, Milka, and Tirsa's courage and willingness to challenge an unjust law by speaking up and speaking out. Be inspired by Henrietta Zoll, who was in her 50s when she founded Hadassah and in her 80s when she created Youth Aliyah, saving Jewish children from Hitler and his henchmen's clutches. Or be inspired by Alexandra Freeman, that ultra-Orthodox mother of 10 that I read about last week, who despite all the challenges, all the difficulties, all the obstacles, became a medical doctor. She, uh, she is already having a great impact on her community. I want you to be the inspiration for your children, 
for your grandchildren, and God willing, your great-grandchildren. So find your own sources of inspiration to be that all you can be. Find support from both men and women. Find support from both women and men to gather your strength to follow your passions. When you do, I'm sure that we'll know your names. And when we know your names, I'm confident that God will establish the worst of your hands, just as our psalmist sang. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Sharkoth, Rabbi Green, so wonderful to hear Torah from you. This Shabbat, we look forward to years of Torah from you.